I am your host, Robin May, and I cannot wait to share with you the guests that will be joining me in the living room. But first, take a moment to text your bestie, call your sister, post on your favorite social media site. Girls, send up smoke screens. Whatever you have to do to let everyone know it's time to come to the living room. Today, we are talking all things women in business, but trust me, this isn't going to be a cookie cutter conversation, no ma'am. By now you should know that I like to cut to the chase and discuss the real deal that goes on in our lives. And today is no different. We are not just talking about entrepreneurship, but we're going behind the scenes to talk about the stuff that folks don't normally talk about. We're going into the challenges that come up when pursuing your purpose in business and what it takes to rise above those challenges. And listen, sis, even if you're not interested in being a business owner, this conversation is going to apply to other areas of your life, including your career, your family, and navigating the overall craziness that we call life. I'm excited to have three special guests with me today to join into this conversation. First, my friend and soror, Katarina Taylor, who worked as the president of the DeKalb Chamber of Commerce for many years. Next, my soror and little sister, Crystal Lee, who is the founder of Girl Plus God. And then last, but certainly not least, another one of my beautiful sorors and friend, Tia McCullers, who is a speaker and best-selling author who has written over 12 books. I cannot wait to dive into this conversation. Remember to join the private Facebook group where we continue the conversation immediately after the show. The information for the after show is on your screen. Now, let's head on over to the living room. Ladies, welcome to the living room. Listen, this off-camera conversation has already been so incredible. Let's bring it on camera, okay, ladies? Okay. All right. So I want all of you to first introduce yourselves, tell where you're from from, not where you reside now, where you're from from, and how long you've been in business. All right, so my name is Crystal Lee. I'm originally from Detroit, Michigan. And um, I've been in business for about four or five years. I've been kicking and screaming that whole yes. time. Daddy was an entrepreneur growing up. I saw him succeed. He did very well. And then I also saw him fail very badly. Mm -hmm. And so for me, I never wanted to yeah. be in business. I said, I'm going to do radio. Yes. I'm going to do it well. Uh -huh. And that's it. Absolutely. Well, uh, God had other plans. So here we are. So four or five years. About four or five kicking years. Kicking and screaming. Kicking and screaming. To, to this day. Still. <laughs> yes. See, and that's what I said. We're going to have a real conversation. Okay. Tell us about your journey. So, Katarina Taylor, I'm originally from Kansas City, Kansas. Yes. And so I've been helping entrepreneurs, I would say, 30 plus years. Wow. wow. My father was an entrepreneur, so I had to work in that business yes. at 11. Wow. And so, and then through my journey as a banker and a president of a chamber of commerce, I've been helping businesses and I love it. And I'm excited to get your perspective as someone who helps business owners. All right, one more. Me Let's too. Go. <laughs> yes. <laughs> My name is Tia McCullers. Yes. I'm from from yes. Greensboro, North Carolina, and I've been in business for 15 years. But unlike these ladies, I did not have a family member who was an entrepreneur. Right. But I knew from my very first day on my very first job that I was not going to be able to do that. <laughs> wait a minute. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. My so very you first knew. day, my very first job, I said this is not for me. That has mm. tickled my whole soul. And you know what? I grew up in a home where my mom and my dad felt like, you go get you a good nine to five. Mm -hmm. You work on that nine to five for a good 40 years. Right. You go ahead and get your retirement you and settle down yeah. somewhere. Mm -hmm. Every yep. so often, my mom still asks me, so when, when are you going to get a job, though? Right. Job, job. <laughs> yes, right. a job, job. All right, so I love uh, <laughs> discovering and learning how people stumble upon their purpose, and I'm saying stumble intentionally because a lot of times, y'all, I was a math major in undergrad. <laughs> don't, don't even worry about that. So I want all of you guys to share with me, how did you stumble upon your purpose? Mm -hmm. I, Robin, I don't think mine was more of a stumble. It was of a realization. Okay. Um, my grandmother, I would always say when I graduated from college, I didn't know how to cook. Uh -huh. And my grandmother would always say, don't worry about it. She's reading. Every time somebody's going, Tia's not cooking, don't worry about it. Wait she's a minute, because they will be calling you out, right? Yes. When well, she's not in here, don't worry about it. She's reading. She's reading. And alone. I forgot to say that you are a best-selling author, mm -hmm. so you've written 11 books. So yes. they would 
preparing you for your destiny. Right. Okay. Right. 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 She was. They didn't know. They were. They were hate. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but maybe she saw something in me. Yeah. You know that they didn't see. And I was a journalism major. I have always loved telling stories. I've always loved reading. But it was a layoff in 1999 that prompted you know this awakening that you love to read and you love to write. So sometimes those two things get married. Yeah. And they got married, and I've just been producing these book babies. You know, over and over. And I'm a, I remember that your husband, you told your husband, give me this period of time to see if I can make this work. Am I making that story up? It might It might be made up just a little I'm bit. Gonna tell you, <laughs> I think he gave you a time. He, I, I, after I'd been writing for a while. Okay, okay. And you know how sometimes you can kind of like get relaxed and uh -huh. like, oh, I'm good. And he's like... <laughs> I need to see so you're kicked back a little too much. Yes, you know, get your writing book. Right, get your writing because he was an entrepreneur as well. And so we need to be producing. Absolutely. Um, and if I'm not producing and I had been producing and things kind of slow down, he's like, okay, let's see some fruit from this. All right. All right. Your turn. Tell us a little bit of how you stumbled upon helping entrepreneurs. So probably in, the, in kindergarten, I would go to our family business and I would run the register. I was wow. stand on a milk crate, and literally that's how I really learned to count. Wow. And then I got moved to the office where I could actually help with the bank deposits. Yes. <laughs> so that's really kind of, you know, where I started my journey in banking. I knew that I could count money. I could basically manage it a little bit at yeah. the age of, of 11 at that point. And so going into banking and really working with uh, small businesses, mm -hmm. especially small businesses of color, yes, knowing that they didn't have the access or the resources, and being able to help them, you know, navigate that process, and then that led me to the Chamber of Commerce, yeah, and that was kind of more big time, right? Now I could really get to the resources and the access through government and other grants to help small businesses. So it was really growing up in a family business, and I always say. If you have a family business, you know, child labor laws do not apply. I mean, <laughs> they do not apply. Let me tell you something. It doesn't apply even with church. We have our children in a stuffing envelope. Absolutely. Like Absolutely. Right. My so, kids pass out bookmarks at all every the time. Right. Absolutely. Exactly. Right. Crystal, your turn. How did you discover your passion? Oh, my goodness. So, of course, I'm in entertainment. Mm -hmm. But I started off with, like, record labels, hip hop. Mm -hmm. I've worked at TMZ, I've worked at Warner Brothers, some of the biggest companies in the world, mm -hmm. and I love them, but I always felt like something was missing. Mm -hmm. So I grew up in church, but I've always tried to stay far away because I'm like, I'm too loud, yes. you know, they don't need, they don't want all of this. Yeah. And so it was crazy how God led me to an opportunity to do gospel radio, because mm -hmm. again, I was still like, I don't want to do it. Yes. You know, the saints not going, they're, they're not going to accept me, they're not going to understand yeah. me. So I almost became what it was that I needed. I almost started my brand because I wanted for women to know it's okay for you to be your authentic self yes. and that purpose comes through identity. And if you don't mm -hmm. know who you are, then you're, you're not fully able to walk in your purpose. So I literally said, let me create these t-shirts. Let me create this movement so that women can know we can love God yes. and we can still be fly and all yes. that good stuff. Yes. So Absolutely. that's the reason why I started. Now you said you were trying to run from church world, but you just preached a sermon. <laughs> so we're going to call if you. If it's in you, it's in you. We're going to call you. <laughs> Mr. Crystal, how about that? Uh, all right, so we have a little time before we go to break. See, I'm going to put you back on the spot. Okay. I want us to keep it all the way 100. That's how the young kids talk. <laughs> I want to keep it all the way real. What has been one of the most surprising uh, challenges you found in business? One of the most surprising challenges. I will put the surprising challenge on me. Okay. And the challenge mm. that I have is I'm not a person who likes to ask for help. Mm. Wow. And I like it. You know, like if you are in the middle of the street and your car breaks down, mm -hmm. you can sit in the car and no one will help you. They'll honk at you. They'll yes. be mad that you're blocking mm -hmm. the way. There's no forward movement. You're not doing mm -hmm. anything. But the moment you get out, Yes. And you tell somebody or you start to make some movement for yourself. Yes. I'm, I need help. What do people do? People stop and they help you. They That's help you so get good. it to the side That's of the road. Yes. They say, OK, yeah. we can steer it this way or I can jump you off. Not asking for help has been a challenge for me. Ooh, and That's you know, good. ladies, can y'all agree with yeah, that? I think absolutely. we're all in that place. Y'all yes. tell me what in you think about space. that. Well, about what because, you know, you don't want to necessarily ask for help. And then it's like, then you think people are going to judge you for asking because yeah. are you not successful if you ask for help? Wait a minute. Let's stop there because yeah. that's so good because I think sometimes we get caught up in our own height. Yeah. And we'll think, 
we should be further along and shouldn't yeah. have to yeah. ask. Exactly. You, yeah. you deal with that, Crystal? Absolutely, especially when you're on social media, right? Yes. When That's you right. looking at everybody else and what they're doing, <laughs> and you're like, here I am yeah, with exactly. my little business. I'm not <laughs> doing nothing. Because look exactly. at what she's doing, as exactly. opposed to just saying, I'm doing great, I'm in my own lane. Mm -hmm. And like you just said, Tia, asking somebody right. to assist you where you mm -hmm. need it. Because right. I know that there are areas where I can kill it, and yes. there are some things that's just not my ministry where I need to say, can you please help me grow yeah, my business? Absolutely. But absolutely. you know, I think women should get that period, yeah. especially women mm -hmm. in business, mm -hmm. because I always say where I have it going on, I can help another sister in that yeah. area, but then where I'm struggling, like you just said, if I just would be courageous enough, why do you think, Tia, it stops you? What, what stops you from asking? Well, because half the time I'm thinking they're not going to do it right. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> or I can do it myself. Yes. Or, you know, I'll, and I'll, I'll ask for the help and put it out there. And you know how you said, never mind. Just no, right. I'm right. myself. Yes. Yes. My yes. husband's exactly. favorite statement for me is I always say, that's all right. I got it. I got, right. it. I got, I got it. it. I got it. And so yeah. there's this old African proverb someone said to me one time, I never forgot. If you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. Mm -hmm. Let me stop you right yes. there. Absolutely. Ladies, I told you this was going to be so incredible. We have to take a break.